All right, let's do it. Hey, everybody, I'm Shane. I'm Lex. And uh, PDQ&A today. It's yeah. a little chilly today. Yeah, it is. Pretty cool. I can also hear doors slamming out there. Someone tell people to calm down. That, I think that was uh, Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Uh, Kelly. Yeah, uh, control room. So, Kelly, I just wanted to, to run one by you, man. You know it's webcast day, right? Yeah. Did you not step close enough to your razor there? You got the, the shadow going on already, man. Of course. I love it. Look at that. Oh, All right. <laughs> yeah, you got a ways to go. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a, we're gonna do some questions and answers. I know quite a few questions have come in. Then I saw a couple pop up on the uh, chat, the chat window prior to the actual you know recording. Let's go ahead and jump into it. By the way, uh, De Deploy Twelve was officially released yesterday. It's awesome, guys. I love it. Fantastic. And our first question comes to us live from Stephen V. Why can I not deploy auto deployments with the command line version of PDQ Deploy? Is it not implemented? How much and what kind of whiskey do I need to send to get it to work? Ooh. Hmm. I guess bribery. we hadn't thought of turning PDQ&A into some type of a bribery network. <laughs> um, um. Yeah, okay, okay, so the answer is, uh, yeah, you cannot call an auto deployment package from the command line, but you can. However, yeah, you, you can call a schedule. Yeah, and since auto deployments, uh, in order to work, auto deployments must, in fact, be attached to a schedule. You can call the schedule. So if you, uh, I don't think I have an auto deployment set up here. Uh, but assuming I did, um, it doesn't matter. If you've, got, if you've got a schedule, like we have a schedule here. Um, I don't think it's attached to it. That's not an auto deployment schedule. But all you'd have to do, we've covered this a little bit, actually a little bit last week as well. Um, you have your PDQ deploy. CLI, the command mm -hmm. line interface, and you can see that by typing that I get my uh, usage statement. You can do a PDQ deploy, um, and then there's a start schedule, and then just the schedule ID, whatever that is. It's, you always see you can see the ID by going. It's twenty. Twenty in this yeah, case. Yeah, look, look, looking at the ID, uh, any schedule. If there's auto deployment packages that are attached, to that they will run. It goes mm -hmm. off of obviously the targets that you've specified. So you run this, it's going to kick off. And that's immediately. Yeah. That so the, uh, Stephen, yeah, there's now there are some. Give you guys a little, a little taste. There are some pretty big changes, uh, definitely for the better, coming to auto deployments. You're going to like them. And uh, I haven't verified that, that you'll be able to. I believe almost uh, almost assuredly you'll be able to call the actual package um, from the command line uh, with these changes. But, uh, you know, irrespective of the future, you can do that now, once again, just calling the schedule. schedule. Yep. And auto deployments only really work uh, when they are scheduled. scheduled so. Yeah. All right. so hopefully that answers <clears throat> your question, Stephen. Dear Shane and Lex, I often use the reboot shutdown function. Are there any plans to include a function to only reboot or shut down if no user is logged on? If not, can I realize it with a PowerShell script? Yours from across the pond, Timo. So Timo! First of all, Timo, again, end user, why do you care? <laughs> shut him down. So, <laughs> really? Uh, now that we have Lex's hand answer out of the way, which is just his answer. I practiced for, that he, before. He does that in eulogies. I do. For loved ones. <laughs> it's like, by the way, just shut them down. Who cares? Shut, shut them down, yeah. Um, okay, that, that functionality exists right now, mm -hmm. natively. And yes, the answer, of course, I'm sure Chris is doing three backflips right now. Of course, you can realize that with PowerShell script. But the, the native functionality, uh, let's just take a peek at... Uh, you would set that under conditions. We're not going to actually kick this off. But there's AutoCAD. Here's the AutoCAD mm -hmm. package. Uh, yeah, you just go up to um, a reboot step. So you said you, you're often a fan of that. And then in the reboot, under your conditions, there's a logged on state where you can say only run this condition if the default is always run, irrespective. But uh, you can say only run if no user is logged on or only run if a user is logged on. And that includes locked or disconnected if they're using remote desktop. Mm -hmm. So um, to answer your question, just yet, yeah, it's native right there. You want to reboot after installing, in this case, AutoCAD, but you only want to reboot if no one's logged on, you would just click that, choose that reboot step and say only run if no user is logged on. And then if there's not a logon session, it'll reboot that system. So that's a native 
Native feature right there for you under the conditions tab. All you do is just sit here and shake my head. Why do you care? <laughs> Get your job done. <laughs> Leave your wake. Let everyone lay as they it's are. It's my job. It's your job. My job is to reboot your system. All right. Uh, hopefully that answered your question, Colonel. Yeah. Next question from Darren S. And by the way, that is an outstanding picture, Darren. Thank you so Love much. Love the kilt. Yes, that is. You've got to be a real man to pull that off. Yeah, that's fantastic. I have an update for a program, Autodesk Fusion 360. Is there a way to use the conditions to check if the process is running and stop it if it is? Um, I don't have, uh, we don't have Autodesk Fusion 360 here. Uh, I saw this question, made the request for it, mm -hmm. and I haven't gotten back. But we're going to go, go ahead and let's remove Autodesk Fusion 360 from the equation and just say, you have an update for a program, but you want to make sure that the process uh, is... Okay, so you're saying, is there a way to use the conditions to check if the process is running and stop it if it is? Okay, so I'm gonna, there, there's, there's, two, there's two ways to answer this. Because number one, you can always use a task kill. Mm -hmm. Even if the process isn't running, you can just use a task kill to kill it. Um, just set your, your uh, exit codes on that that if it's not running, you can still continue. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll show you that one. So here's, so this one here, this, this step would kill, oh yeah, sorry. There we go, sorry about that. So in this one, we're just gonna kill notepad. Once again, you could do this without even checking to see if it's running because task kill doesn't do anything if the process is in fact not running. But you do a task kill, slash F, slash I M, that's force and the image name or the EXE name would be notepad.exe. And then you change, like, 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 like Lex mentioned, you always, when you're doing a task kill, add uh, 128 to the uh, success codes because if it tries to kill a process that's not running, it's gonna return 128. Well, in this case, we want that to be a success. We want to, yeah, it's, we want to kill the process. Mm -hmm. It's not running. We're going to call Happy that day. a success. Good enough, yeah. So uh, zero means it killed it. 128 means it wasn't there to kill. Uh, and then you don't even have to bother looking for it. Uh, if you want to look for it, but I, I'm going to actually modify your, your other your part of your other question. And let's say you want to check to see if a process is running. And then maybe if it's running, don't do anything. You want to stop the deployment. Mm -hmm. We've got a way to do that. And it's not native, just like task kill isn't native. But uh, notice I've got this test running process. And this is testing for notepad. It's the same thing. It's running a command step. And I'll just make this a little wider here. And I'm doing a, a task list instead of a task kill. And you're piping it to a find. Yeah, uh, doing a, a slash fi, that means a filter. And you're looking for any image name or exe that equals notepad.exe. And then piping that to a find, you can see the slash i slash n and the notepad.exe. What does that do? Uh, if it finds it, it returns a zero. If you want to kill this, pro this, this, this deployment, if it finds it, just remove the zero from the success codes. Maybe put a one there. And then in your options, you just have the error mode stop deployment with an error. That means if, if, if this finds that notepad exe is running, it's going to return a zero. Zero is a failure in this case, and we say stop, stop processing. So use task list, and uh, that should take care of it for you, really. Yeah. Uh, ho I know that wasn't the, the question, but that's, it leads into this, and I thought, you know what, this is going to be a good one to show people, because we have people that say, hey, I want to update this, but not if it's running. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Cool. All right, the kilt was so good. We're gonna we're gonna give Darren S a twofer. How about that? Also, other question related to the same software. I have deployed it via PDQ, but it doesn't appear in programs and features. Is there a way to get a report of where it is installed? Okay. So on those rare occasions, uh, boy, I wish we did get that fusion. Yeah, that would be good. It's probably gonna be waiting for us when we get done with this. Um, there are applications out there. I I know of a handful myself. Uh, you'll run into them that don't, when you, when you install them, they don't actually place their application information in the uninstall key in the registry, mm -hmm. basically where the programs and, and features are installed. That's where we go look for it. Yeah, that's where we go look for it. The answer is yes. It just depends on, uh, you might need to use a combination of a file scanner 
and or a, a registry scanner. Yes, yeah. perfect. So uh, looking at, let's see, I'm going to go into inventory. I'm going to go into preferences. In preferences, I have just uh, a scan profile called AutoCAD file. Uh, what I've done, we've got a files notes. Anytime you open a, a, a scan profile, you can always add whatever different um, scanners you want. You know, we've got applications, computer details in this one, and files. You can have multiple files, multiple registry, etc. In this case, I'm going to open up the files scanner. And if you can see, we're looking for, we're using the program files variable. Mm -hmm. So look in program files, Autodesk, and then you notice we've got the double splat. That mm -hmm. means check in this and all subdirectories up until you find an ACAD splat.exe. All right, because there could be a lot of different AutoCAD type of, of, of executables. This is just an, an example. Once you've got your filter in play, your filters in place, scan computers using that scan profile. And I believe we did Homer just before while we were doing the pre the pre show. Yep. Open up Homer. Notice applications normally go into the applications table. In this case, it's going to be in files. the files. But notice we've got the file version, the product version. That's probably what you want to look for. Mm -hmm. And this is where you can build your collections or your reports based off of the files. Instead of applications, you're just going to have to go somewhere else. So you go to report, new report, for example, basic report, make this fast. Um, While he's doing that, one thing you need to remember on your file scans, you want to get as far down that tree as you can. Because mm -hmm. if you scan everybody and you start at the C drive, it's scanning the whole disk. Yeah, if you just say scan, you know, C splat, uh, backslash, splat, splat, backslash, basically everything. <laughs> It's going to be a long... Yeah, it's going to take, it can take a long time. Long day. Um, so I'm going to say, show the computer name, the file name. We'll do the file path. And we'll do a product version. How's that sound? Sounds delightful. Perfect. And then in your filters, all you got to do is just add a filter where, once again, you're using the file. And the file name... Contains. Uh, we'll do starts with. Starts with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. ACAD. Actually, if you want to use if you want to use a a, um, a wild card, mm -hmm. you would do matches uh, pattern. You can say just ACAD splat dot exe. Save that and run it. And there you go. I can see that Homer and Leonard have uh, AutoCAD twenty one zero five two zero. So you could also have the in your co collection, mm -hmm. etc. So Built yeah, there's ways around it. Same thing with registry. You know, um, it's it's unfortunate that the that the vendor didn't place this stuff in applications, but we do have a way that you can that you can nail that down. Find out all those versions that are old, and and then of course you can deploy the latest Fusion to a collection that shows anything older than twenty one zero fifty two, for example. Yep. All right. Good question. Good question. Dear Shane and Lex, I would like to have a step in SCCM to call on PDQ to deploy a group of nested packages to a new PC after an image is installed. Is there a way to call a package based on PC name or IP address or location? I would like to be able to deploy everything that PC will need for that location at once rather than deploy the base programs and then deploy another package. Later, sincerely, Doug K., also known as Dougie Fresh, the human beatbox. Huh. Hey, Doug. Last week's webcast, we actually covered um, kicking off PDQ deploy from the command line. So you're talking about having this as a step in SCCM. Um, I believe SCCM runs uh, its steps as local systems. So there's a couple of extra steps. Uh, Chris just came in. Uh, you want to jump? Uh, Chris looks really this, excited. Yeah. He looks really excited. And you want to wanna, you wanna jump on this? Sure. All right, I'll step back. You can go ahead and sit down. <coughs> All right, hey, everybody, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. So uh, with SCCM, I've never used SCCM myself, but uh, after talking with Shane, if it's running as local system, in order to get it to run something in the context of another user, one quick and dirty way that you can uh, that you can do this is with a scheduled task. Uh, if you use the uh, scheduled tasks to create a task, make it run as a separate user, you can then trigger that task. And just as an example, I did create a quick package for you guys to take a look at. So 
We'll pull that, that sounded up. like a cyclical reference there. If you create a task to call a scheduled task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, absolutely. All right. So I'm just I just wonder if it was like too early in the morning for this for me anyway. <laughs> uh, where are we? Hold on. Need to open it up over yonder. Just give me one moment while I'm grabbing this. Yonder? Yonder screen? Over yonder. They're Mattelin yarns. All right, I can't hear any of the stuff, so I'm just... No, no, no. Nope, we'll exciting. let you know. Okay. We'll let you know what's going but on. No, there's... Uh, yeah, while you're, while you're pulling that up, I, I think there's also another question in there on uh, WDS or something that I saw. Kind of, you can do a, kind of a similar, a similar thing here that Chris is going to be showing you. There's a number of ways to kick off deployments. Yep. And uh, while you can... Well, Chris, is, Chris will show you. You can use schedule tasks. You can, if you can use PS Exec, you can use PowerShell. But I think you're going to show it with a Windows schedule tasks here. Yes. All right. So here, I just created a package with two steps. Uh, what this does is it will uh, first step will create the schedule task. Mm -hmm. Second one will actually run the schedule task. So uh, this is the command itself. We'll just uh, briefly kind of show this. Uh, we are just creating it, running it as uh, this. Oh nope. That didn't work. Domain do. user. No, I was trying to do the highlighter thing, but all right. So we're, it runs as this user with this not my password. So obviously use real usernames and passwords. Uh, it's in this case I was working on a support ticket with 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 support about creating a, a scheduled task for when a user logs on. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's just on log on. Just two birds with one stone. Isekinicho. So with that, it creates a task here under a folder called webcast test. And then here's the actual command that's run, which is powershell.exe, and then the command to invoke command, which is the one we were talking about last week, to run mm -hmm. from another machine to say, hey, machine with PDQ deployer inventory, run these commands. This is how you do it. There is a caveat with doing scheduled tasks, however. If you're using quotes, say, for example, your package has spaces in it, and you want to put it in quotes, scheduled tasks in the arguments uh, box has to have double quotes escaped. Mm -hmm. Doing that from the command line means you're doing some crazy stuff, which looks like this. PDQ deploy, dash package, or yeah, PDQ deploy, deploy, dash package, and then whack, 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 quote, example package, whack, 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 quote. And then it's only, it's only if the package has a space Spaces. In Correct. It. Otherwise, you can just uh, put it directly and it works. And here, I mean, I'm not going to get too much in PowerShell today because that's not the focus, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> to feed in the local machine of <laughs> uh, who you're going to grab this on and who you're going to run this against. And uh, basically, this will run the package uh, from whoever you're targeting it. Create the sale task to run against your machine that you want to deploy. In this case, in my package, so I have... How those arms go again? One here and one way <laughs> over... No, so it's more up this way. You know? I mean, obviously, <laughs> the, the thing is, you've got to you get, st stick around. Uh, you've got to have the, the command ultimately has to be run from your PDQ deploy or PDQ yes. inventory console. Console. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the, the the question is from another machine. How can I execute something uh, on the PD, PDQ deploy console using the command line? Once again, there's a lot of ways of doing it. PS exec invoke command with PowerShell schedule tasks. Uh, there's a lot of ways you do, of doing it. You just got to find the way that's that's best for you in your environment. Yes. And uh, if you are going to use invoke command, once again, please refer to last week's webcast because there is a workaround that you have to do that Chris outlined quite uh, quite quite yeah. extensively. Yeah. But I've just been told by the little man, the question for you, the little man in my ear, that there's I guess now that you walked on, now PowerShell questions are coming on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's where I'm on fire, like, yeah, like dragging so, so things. So Your nose is itching. Someone's talking about PowerShell. Okay, here it is. Right. Dear Shane, Lex, and Chris, <laughs> is there a way to list available packages, command line packages in PowerShell, PowerShell, PowerShell using I'm quite sure I understand the question here, then. Is there talking, a way you're to talking list? Over Mr. You're talking Killer, over, yeah. Oh. Sorry, I... You, I can't yeah, hear, so I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Now you can go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is there a way to list available packages in PowerShell using command line command? You can call PowerShell directly from command line, like PowerShell.exe, and then from there you can straight, you know, run PowerShell, or you can specify a file, or you can even be more specific asking, and specify think, command. I think they're asking. Can uh, you get a Jason, list? Are you asking? Is there a way to show the available packages in, in PDQ deploy oh. using uh, the command line? In this case, he's PowerShell or CMD. Not. 
with using our command line interfaces easily. However, that being said, you can run uh, use SQLite yep. uh, directly with PowerShell. In fact, you can put your uh, SQL query and store it in like a string. Mm -hmm. And then you can pipe that to uh, SQLite 3.exe, mm -hmm. what, what we're using, and then at the location of the, dat uh, the database. So you'd say, for example, you want to know everything in packages. You'd say, in quotes, select star from packages, uh, pipe, SQLite 3.exe, and then in <laughs> single quotes, the location of the database. And it works great. Uh, I do this. I have a blog post where I'm actually doing something similar. You, you could do something like this. I, I have a, that's a good question. We would probably make this a native something that's native inside of deploy where you can list the packages. But if you just go to database and deploy or, 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 or inventory, hit your SQLite console, yeah. move this down. So now you've already, you're already opened up this uh, the, the database. It's just basic SQL statements here. Yeah, just select star from packages. And that's going to give you everything in, you know, everything in that package. What you're most likely going to want to do is um, uh, break it down. I think it's his name or package yeah. name. Yeah, I think it's name. Select name from packages. You need to learn how to spell. With an E. Yeah. yeah. Packags. <laughs> see. It's the lesser known spelling. Yeah, there's there's a way to do that. Uh, it's not the easiest. It's not it's not as intuitive, but yeah, you could basically uh, you know, load your SQL Lite database and and then run select name from packages. And then store it in an array and then iterate through them and do all this cool stuff in PowerShell. Yeah, now I got to shake my head at you, man. It's just <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way you want to do it. It's awesome. I, I'm with so, you. Did you got to throw a reboot in Do we have a, another a PowerShell question? No. 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 Bye, Chris. Get out of here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Thanks man. Absolutely. St st stay, st stay near to hand in case we need you. Uh, need to phone a friend or something, huh? <laughs> Dear Shane Laxen, goodbye, Chris. <laughs> so, variables can now be used in the email subject of the post deployment notification and post schedule notification can we use them in display messages to users sincerely Jeff L in display me okay so th I think what you're talking about uh, you know we're, we're normally nice people say we're gonna reboot your machine in like 60 seconds mine's like we're gonna reboot your machine in three seconds good luck saving your data you have password. 60 milliseconds yeah <laughs> It just blinked. I hope you read this. Your stuff's shutting down. So in, in this message here, I'm going to say, you know, um, well, let's put a couple of variables. Here's your little variable guy here. Here's some custom. We'll do file share. We'll do date and time. How's that? We'll do date time. That doesn't make any sense. But I'll just lose that. We'll just do date and time. Let's By the see, way, let's this, see is this, a, this is a new feature in uh, Deploy 12. We'll so we're just now Call going, that yeah, that, that, that's why he was mentioning you can now. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So I'll just, uh, let's just check this out. So if we're going to display this message for 60 seconds, we're on the computer Guinness. Actually haven't tested this right here. So let's, I love doing stuff. When we have live, it. let's do it live. Let's just, we let's don't just test, do but when we do, we do it in production. <laughs> <laughs> that is your motto, dude. Do that. <laughs> So we're now now this should display a message and hopefully yeah oh, there yeah is. there we go so the answer I mean yeah there's that's how you can specify your the variables if you ever see that little box um, next to a control or, or, or a little window this little this little button here I should say that means that's the variables you're Bring supported here and actually uh, we will expand the variable that we any variables that we see at the time so the, if it were run right now that's what that would say all right so yes this does have access to to the variables. All right. So hopefully that answers your question. Our next question coming to us from the queen of PDQ, Miss Monica Kay. I have had PowerShell, Command, and Install packages fail on Macs running Windows 7 through Parallels. Is that because of the Parallels desktop or because the base machine is a Mac? Is there a known way to work around problems with Windows 7 in Parallels? I've used par Hi Monica. I've used Parallels. Um, you just it, it's once it's once once it's on Parallels, it, it really is just a virtual machine. Yeah. So, you, but you still have those those same requirements. I mean, are you able to scan? Are you able to deploy the SMB uh, window? You know, the SMB communications have to be there. Firewall ping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess where where there could be uh, like like with any other 
with any other uh, virtual machine, stuff like Wake on LAN doesn't necessarily work uh, because at that, at that level, the virtual machine, is, the, the NIC it is doesn't virtual. Doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess I need. Why don't you Why don't you kick off uh, to our support? Send us some screenshots or something so we can see what you're talking about. Because once you're talking, I mean, once you get a virtual machine, kind of regardless of the platform, it's it's that that's the machine. Yeah. Um, there are some certain lower level things that might not look like they would on a regular uh, physical box, but for the most part, should run the same. That yeah. layer to us, we it, it's a it's a Windows operating system. So, and obviously PowerShell has to be enabled. All those at BB installs. <laughs> Chris is over Chris here is doing over the going, guns like. Hey, <laughs> Uh, but that, that, I have used Parallels before, and, and I haven't had a problem. Dear Shane and Lex, what is the difference using PDQ Deploy to deploy a bat or use the PDQ Deploy parameters and command line? Sincerely, Dustin M. Okay. And I, I called this out, I saw because I saw your question in the, in the pre-show banter. Uh, there are some slight differences. Um, go back over here to this new packet. When you call a batch file from an install step uh, you'll, you'll enter the you'll enter you know it sees a batch file there um, and then the parameters it's it's gonna pass it's gonna pass those just with a slightly different it's gonna do a, like a, a, a slash s just a, to format those parameters slightly differently than if you were to actually do a, a command step a command step actually Whatever you type in here in this in this window actually runs as a, a batch file. Mm -hmm. uh, we just take the contents of this, wrap it up, and then send it to um, CMD. Whereas the install step, we actually run it through uh, an API for in, in, in installing. Different wrappers for them. Slightly different. There's, it's very rare that you'll find. Hey, this will work. Uh, in a batch file called from the commit from the install step where it wouldn't from the command window very rare but there are some very slight subtle differences for the most part there's n nothing of note that's a difference yeah. so yeah it, it, just so you know it, it, doing this you know um, ping uh, you know dash T is the same as having a batch file that does a ping and then, in the, and then the batch file has a percent one, mm -hmm. saying whatever the first parameter is. And then in the parameters line, you put it at dash T. It's, it's effectively yeah. the same thing. So hopefully that answers it. Dear Shane and Lex, is there a setting you can add to turn, off, uh, to turn UAC off on all machines before running deployment? The IT team wants it on. Me. OK, so you're <laughs> asking us to help you circumvent your IT team? Good question. <laughs> this is Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> this, is Ke <laughs> this is Kelly's question? Yeah. All right. Oh, so you are me. I thought this was just No, no, it's like someone with Clouded in. Okay. In all right. So first of all, we're going to take away all of Chris, Kelly's Chris, is there abilities. a for PowerShell command let to do that? Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, you can go to the registry. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say it's a registry. Honestly, I would do the registry. It's the yeah, I don't. I, what I just asked Chris is. You need to be if, on a mic if you're going to talk, Chris. What I asked Chris no. was if there's just out of curiosity a command, a commandlet, and he said, no, it's a registry. Yes. You just have to go modify the registry. It's the sa effectively the same area of the registry that your group policy will do it. Um, you'd have to modify that registry. Depending on how your group policy is enforced, um, it, it may not, it may be, a, it may be a, a, a tough call because if you have to, if you have to do a, then hurry and force that policy. It's going to force the upper level policy. Um, I don't, yeah, that one. It just depends. If your IT team has really locked those down, it's not going to work. Yeah, you're going to have some issues that I know of. If, if you can, <laughs> just if remember, anybody finds Kelly, out, let us know. I'm going to put you on a heartbeat reboot if you do that. We do have another. We do have another question. Oh, okay. And our final question from Dustin M. What ports does PDQ Inventory use to report if a PC is online? After installing Semantic Cloud SEPSB, all our PCs in the other office report they are offline, but you can deploy slash ping to them. Um, if you can, if you can ping. If, okay, so it's reporting that they're offline, but once you can deploy or you can ping them, um, if you're in inventory. Uh, the inventory determines if a computer is online two ways. Number one, 
once it starts to scan, and once it successfully starts to scan a machine, it'll automatically make that machine look online. like it's online. But then it uses what's known as the heartbeat process, and that heartbeat is is uh, controlled here. The heartbeat though has a slightly uh, one little caveat. So if you go into your preferences of, of inventory, go to network, uh, you'll see your auto heartbeat enabled. What this means is we'd send pings out to those machines, but if that machine does not return within two seconds, so it gives it 2,000 milliseconds, mm -hmm. if it does not return within two seconds, we mark that as offline. And there's not a way to customize that. So what I would what I would gather, if you can actually ping that machine, there's probably some latency issues on that remote that remote office that those machines are coming back after two seconds of a ping, that's why they will be shown as, as offline. Um, otherwise, I mean, the, what do we use? We, we use the same ports, and it, there's actually a knowledge base article on this. There's a handful of them. Same ports that um, Windows uses for file and printer sharing, mm -hmm. which is uh, using SMB, SMB, server message block protocol. Use, using SMB, it's those exact same ports. That's why you have to have admin dollar share. That's why you have to have, you know, Windows, sh the, the file sharing mm -hmm. and, and gotcha. the printer sharing enabled in order to do this. Those are the ports that we use. And then, of course, ICMP, which is your ping, echo request. But if you can ping it and it's showing offline here, I would say it's a, a latency, latency issue. Yep. All right. Rock on. Hey, guys. Hey guys, Lex is now joining, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> welcome into I'm saying goodbye, and he's like, oh, hey. hey. Oh, we started? Uh, <laughs> was I asleep the whole time? We hey, what, what, what are we going to do next? Is it next, next week we're going to go over all the new stuff and yeah, deploy PDQ 12? Yeah, deploy 12. Oh, yeah, so. some great features in there, especially those of you guys who have um, you know, machines that you deploy to, and your targets have different, take different sets of credentials. Credentials, yeah. You know, heretofore, you've had to okay, these credentials will go on this deployment, these credentials will go on this one. Now you can mix and match if you have inventory because yeah. now it can use the inventory scan user yeah, as the cool. credentials. So, uh, yeah, tune in next week and rock on, everybody. We'll talk to you later. See you. Thanks for all your questions today and for joining the webcast. I want to congratulate Darren S. and Doug K., winners of PDQ Swag. Send us an email at webcast at adminarsenal.com. We'll get that stuff sent right out to you. And don't forget, join us next week as we go over PDQ Deploy 12. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week.